<laughs> uh, welcome back to ASU, to the second episode of ASU. Today, we will be discussing... China! China. <laughs> Just China? And the U.S. U.S. Yes, versus China, US. baby. Let's go. U.S. and China. Okay. Oh my god, no. I'm sure all the children have heard about TikTok getting banned oh, man. in the United States. That officially it's, passed, right? That officially passed? Yeah, that no, officially passed. Really? It passed, yeah, yeah. They did, really? they did. So now it oh is my god. officially mm -hmm. banned because yep. um, they wanted, the U.S. Senate wanted ByteDance to sell off TikTok. Their shares? Uh, no, not mm -hmm. their shares, but like they wanted to sh uh, sell... I, 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 yeah. I forgot the the I forgot the wording exactly, but ByteDance owns TikTok, right? But yeah. ByteDance is a Chinese company, yeah. so in order for TikTok to operate in the United States, there w would have to be a United an States, an American company, uh -huh. to buy mm -hmm. TikTok that is going to be operating in the United States. Mm -hmm. Ah, I see. So they want and to obviously we all know why the fuck they're doing that is because like the American government wants control. Control. Want control. Obviously. Yeah. Simply. Obvi obviously. But, you know, for Gen Zs, I feel like it's it's America's second biggest tragedy since 9/11. What the TikTok maybe, man? Maybe. Yeah. Well, a lot maybe of people. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, but a lot of people are saying that this is one of the biggest infringement upon Americans' freedom of speech, which I mm. completely agree with. We, we all know what the American government is trying to do and why they are doing it. It's so fucking crazy, but if a, a lot of people, a lot of American TikTokers have been making videos up talking about this, and I completely agree. I think the American government is starting to really, like, they're scared. They're yes. scared as shit. Why? Because they've seen what social media platforms like TikTok and Instagram and the dissemination of information online can really do to hurt the pockets of so many American corporations, mm -hmm. right? We're seeing, like, especially in light of Israel and Palestine, I understand it's been going on for a really long time. I'm just saying like October 7 is when it really like, like you, they yeah. sprinkle cocaine all over that shit. You yeah, know what I mean? Cocaine. That's what that's what I mean. So the escalation of the conflict and how social media has been a very potent tool in mobilizing information on the conflict and really exposing a lot of America's deep darkest secrets. Do you remember when um, uh, everybody was <laughs> siding with fucking what's his name Osama bin Laden? Osama bin remember? Laden or what? Do you remember that was a whole thing on like um, on American TikTok? I remember because my TikTok is uh, Amer American. Yeah, American. Right. Yeah. yeah. And like, I, I remember, so there was this whole, um, ex somebody leaked Osama bin Laden's, I think, email or letter um, to someone in the United States. I think it was like directed to the United States what government or about? whatever. And Osama bin Laden was basically like, oh God, it's so long. It's so long and it what was, was floating. The premise, of the yeah, the premise was, the premise? was basically like, you know, you blame us for what we're doing, but you're the ones who did this to us. You know, uh, and basically, that's fair. yeah, no, no, and, and that's completely fair. But just think about how for so long, American media, Western media, and keep in mind that for so long we've lived in American hegemony, right? Mm -hmm. Like when the Western world basically holds power over everybody else and controls like international media, and for so long we've always been told, like, you know, like all these fucking like. Oh, Islam is the enemy. Russia and China is the <laughs> enemy, right? And then, it's always that narrative. And then that letter, somebody leaked it online, and it, I swear it went everywhere. But then um, it got taken down. Mm. It got taken down, and of of course, I think it's like, I, I think the American government they probably like they hit up TikTok or you know whatever, and they were like you know take everything down. And so now I can't find it no more. I don't think anybody can find it anymore. But for the people that know, y'all know because y'all see it, right? So the mm. letter Osama bin Laden was like, no, America, like you claim all of these values of like liberty and freedom and it's all just a facade for you like america doesn't actually live by those nope. values like america is a corrupt evil country that's what osama bin laden was saying mm -hmm. and everybody on tiktok was reading it and everybody was like oh my god osama bin laden was the good guy he was oh. a good guy well that's what people are saying i'm not saying anything about osama bin laden just would by the say, way so we would say that in in, in weep terms right Osama bin Laden is Itachi Uchiha. Oh, what do you mean? He is the silent hero that actually warns us that America is corrupt, is evil, right? And Itachi does that too with like how they, how he trying to like uh, expose like Konoha and some shit like that with Tobirama and crap. I see, I see. Yeah. But I feel like in a way about American imperialism, mm. what America has done towards the world, well, uh, let's forget the, you know, the last 20 years. Mm. I feel like the values they brought upon the world with their brand of American exceptionalism, yeah. mm. the American dream and all of that, mm. it instilled a lot of 
uh, aspiration for democratic values and freedom of speech and etc etc values that they preach and they themselves don't, they don't even work. abide by because it's ridiculous hey, it's it, ridiculous it, it, they make if you rules. make the rules you can do whatever the fuck you want with it basically no yeah, I, you know what I uh, c- coming from the girl who, who obviously yeah uh, you know right. I, I live in America and like I also do, I don't want this to come at the detriment of Americans right I think there's an important like a part of a very important part of this conversation, I think, is separating the government from the people, right? So I'm not saying this in the detriment of Americans, but America as a state, as a country, as a government, man. And, like, America, like, as this idea of, like, a country that's, like, land of the free, home of the brave, or whatever they say. And you know how, like, America, the American dream. dream. Nah, let me, tell, let me tell you, like, a lot of us, like, we came to the United States only to realize that it's called the American dream because you have to be asleep to believe in it. <laughs> fair. Yeah. I, like, it's yeah, fair, fair. That's uh, fair. so much of, like, this, what you were saying, American exceptionalism, right? Like, yes. American hegemony. Like, it's such a, it's such a lie. And I think it's so interesting. Right now, we are living mm-hmm. in the time where we are seeing everything just crumble. Yes. We are s- witnessing the decline of not just Western hegemony overall, yeah. but es- especially American hegemony. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and to be honest, yeah, no, I'm here for it. I am actually here, f- I am actually here for it. And even a lot of Americans themselves are here for it. A lot of my American friends and a lot of Americans like you see are you, like Are you online. saying that your, your American friends, sorry to cut you off, but yeah. are you saying that your American friends are actually rooting for the uh, decline the of the of American America. civilization? Nah, okay, y'all want the tea? Mm. All of my friends that are in America. So it's a combination of American, like born and raised American friends to even like international students like me, but then, you know, like they stayed in the U.S. like post-graduation and everything. Yeah. But all my friends that are currently living in the United States, most of them, and I really mean most of them, are trying their best to get the fuck out, man. It is not a good time in America. I'll tell you that right now. Mm. I think a lot of countries, like especially Indonesia, like are still susceptible to sort of like this American romanticization, mm-hmm. right? They romanticize America and like, oh, what life must be like in America. I had that a lot, you know, back when I was still like living in between the United States and Indonesia during like my college years, right? Mm. Um, and this, this, pro- this propensity to hyper glamorize what life in America must be like. Bro, my life in America was hard, man. Yeah, man. Life in America is 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 hard and it's really not that glamorous. And right now, I I don't know if I've ever like said this out there before, but I'm actually so glad I'm back here in Indonesia. And Indonesia is not a perfect country by any a, any scope mm. of that definition. Yes, and a lot I, of like Americans that comes to Indonesia to work, they, they end up it. living here. They yeah, love it. Yeah, they love it. No, and you know why they yeah. you know why they love it is because once you go to America and you feel for yourself how hard life is there. And I'm not saying that life in Indonesia is easy or life anywhere else outside of America is easy. That's not what I'm saying. I'm Mm. saying that when you go to America, you realize just how life in general anywhere is already hard. And in America, for some reason, they make it more like they make, they make it, it uh, make it, they make it unnecessarily harder. much harder and much more complicated. Yes, this is a country that has no concept of social, of, uh, social and health and wel- welfare. Uh, ah, yeah. no, so barely any social welfare. Like uh, in the books, I think like they say that there's social welfare, but really there's there's not like. I, li- I like to I, li- I like to talk something. I, I like to say something about like uh, social welfare in America. Yeah, I swear to God. Each time I see like the Democratic convention, the Republican convention, and when they talk about like social uh, welfare and all of that, mm. I swear to God, these politicians, these American politicians, they have no fucking clue what social welfare means. No. They have mm. no basic concept of, or definition regarding social welfare. No. They're just talking from their asses. They're, yeah. they're only saying why having social welfare is good, yeah. why having social welfare is bad, but they never talk about why social welfare. I mean, it's just, just social welfare. Bro, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. just yeah. look it's at just the... a mouthpiece or like just sweeteners in like their fucking speeches. Um, basically. Yeah. Um, 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 why do you yeah. think look at states like where where I'm from California why do you th- look at the homeless population there mm. my goodness mm-hmm. my goodness like there are yeah, skid row huh skid row it's skid not row. just skid row it's not just skid row anymore I back in California I lived in this one neighborhood um, that is close to my campus so next to my campus was this park it was a public park 
And after 2020, I came back for some time during 2020 because of COVID, right? But then mm -hmm. I came back to the United States like in 2021 um, to finish up like all college. my, all my, yeah, uh, college, walk, uh, pick up all my shit and all that type of stuff, right? Wrap mm -hmm. up my life over there. And I came back and the homeless population has skyrocketed. So now that park is like all of these um, um, homeless people tents. And did y'all know this? Um, y'all know this school called U UCLA, right? U yeah, University yeah. UCLA, everybody knows it. Go mm -hmm. Bruins, um, our neighbors basically. Mm -hmm. And um, UCLA, there are a lot of students and uh, faculty members from UCLA that are homeless. That are literally homeless. Where do they, where they, do they, they live? They live in their cars in the parking lot. Oh, I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. No, no, no. Go look it up because there are articles. There are news articles written about that, how the homeless population has gotten so bad in the United States. UCLA students are having to live in their cars, man. And California is a fucking blue state that talks all about, like, it, it's blue a Democrat. State, yeah. it, no, no, it's a blue yeah. state. Like, we're, we're Democrats, right? And they talk all this fucking nonsense about, like, helping the homeless population and social welfare and blah, 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 blah. You don't do anything. Yeah, <laughs> you don't do anything. Cool. Things have just gotten worse. Now, uh, and I used to live in Los Angeles in California. Now, uh, Los Angeles is a fucking mess. Yeah, man. It's a, it's a fucking mess. You could, like, rob... <laughs> and, oh, my God. And maybe we're kind of, like, going off tangent here. But maybe not because we're talking about U.S. and China. But, like, now in Los Angeles, things have gotten so bad. Like, you could literally rob a store, a bank, whatever. Police are not even allowed to catch you because there's this new... Um, regulation implementation by the head of LAPD who used to be the head of uh, SFPD San Francisco Police Department masa itu orang he ruined San Francisco terus dipindahin ke LA ya LA juga ikut ke rusak lanjing oh my god it's 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 fucking crazy and that's just and I'm not only talking I'm only talking about LA here. I'm only talking about California here. Y'all not seeing what the fuck is happening in Philly. Y'all not seeing what the fuck is happening in New York. America is literally dying. Dude, America <laughs> is dying, man. It's dying. I swear to God, like California is turning out to be a GTA LARP server. Bro. Yeah. I man. mean, for real though, like I have a friend who lives in California as well, right? And she keeps telling me about like her life there and how, yeah, like low incomes and, and shit like that, right? She, she, she lives in like a mid to low like neighborhoods. I, I forgot where. And she even tells me when it comes to like social welfare, uh, welfare that you guys that we that we were talking about, she said so something along the lines of like, I don't want to go to hosp uh, to a hospital when I'm sick. Why? Because it costs a lot of money. Yeah, because it costs I a would lot rather, of fucking money, man. I would rather sit down in my bed and just wait till I yeah you know, till you know till I get better. Oh my god, essentially. Man. Yeah, that's the thing about Americans. So like, I have plenty of American friends on Discord. Mm. And whenever they get sick, they don't go to a doctor. They don't. They never go to a guys, doctor. Guys, hand, hand to my ancestors. I remember international orientation. When I first moved to the United States, we had international orientation. They sat mm. all of us international students down or like, you know, went, went through our orientation process, what to do, what not to do, all that type of shit. One of the things that they um, oriented us on is if you <clears throat> get into an accident, they don't care what it is. You could be hit by a fucking car. Do not call the ambulance. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's don't, what she do says not well. call the ambulance. Do mm. not. An ambulance. If I, God forbid, get into a car crash in the United States on like the fucking highway and the ambulance comes for me, I got to shell out anywhere between $11,000 to $15,000. Yeah, you're fucked. You Jesus are. And most Americans, Christ. most Americans, they don't afford that type of money, bro, nope. for an ambulance. And you're already like, what? Yeah, mudah-mudahan, you're not on the verge of death. But, I mean, if you're in a fucking car crash, you could be. Yeah, man. It's insane. $11,000 is, is like 200 juta, gak sih? Du uh, yeah. ku kurang, le kurang lebih kayak 200 oh juta, 250 God, juta gitu. Man. What do they do to you inside the ambulance? Nothing. They charge you that. Nah, and you know what? I've had to, I've had my own. Um... <laughs> they wrap you in tinfoil. <laughs> 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 no, um, keeps you from rotting. Uh, you from no, rotting. no. We are, and they charge you, you eleven thousand dollars just yeah. for wrapping you. Bro, uh, my my wisdom tooth surgery. I had to get my all my all four wisdom teeth removed um, in the in the states. Obviously, I'm not gonna fly back to Indonesia just to like, mm. yeah, you know what I mean. So like, okay, terpaksa, and I was already like really hurting. Guess how much I paid? How much out of pocket? And I don't get dental insurance, by the way. How uh, much? Eight hundred dollars. Go up, go up, go all the way up. Uh, Two thousand. Go all the way up. Twelve thousand. Wait, what? Gak sampai gitu. No. Uh, Eight thousand. Close. Five thousand. Huh? Five thousand. Five thousand dollars out of pocket. 5, wait, wait, wait. How much does it cost for you to go back to Indonesia just for your dental surgery and coming back? Yeah. Did you try? Did you try to do the? Yeah, math yeah. The math. 
I no, I'm gonna be so honest. I, I think everybody knows this about me. I come from a very social, economically privileged background. I wasn't even thinking about that anymore because oh. I was in so much pain. But like, and yeah, I yeah. also I, okay. I, I I fly business class. Okay. Right. So okay. business class okay. is also very expensive. I but right. I, and, but it was mostly the pain, right? But that I do not take it for granted. Those were, that was one of the moments in my life where I really and I don't mean to sound conceited saying this, but I'm so immensely grateful for the social economic privilege I have to even just be able to afford getting wisdom teeth surgery in America. I did. I, we don't get dental insurance as international students. Mm. I had to pay that shit out of pocket. I'm so, so grateful my mom could afford that for me because uh, what's the alternative? Rotten until you the, die. What's just the like alternative? A, you know, I know. Just like a hailbilly. Bro, I have friends yeah, that they just put up with it because they can't afford any medical mm. treatment. I'm not just yeah, talking man. about wisdom tooth surgery. Mm. I have That's a friend who got... America speak like this. I, I have a friend who got shot in the arm. Oh. The bullet is still inside. Oh, yeah, I mean... Why did he get shot in the arm? Lead poisoning. <laughs> oh, because oh. we also have a shooting issue in the U.S. I think that's very common yeah, information. Oh, my God. Did he shoot back? Huh? Did he shoot back? Mana gua tahu. Tapi pokoknya dia itu ada ada peluru di dalam itunya, oh like in his God. arm, and Ooh. it's it's still in there. Like he... sometimes, sometimes like uh, I know this is like off the off the topic, but sometimes like bullets actually come out of your skin. They do, but this one yeah. like um, stuck in there. Stuck in, in there. Me. Wow. Okay. It becomes you. You get lead poisoning. <laughs> oh my god! I don't fucking know. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember like, I mean, this was like way, way. Yeah, I bet this we doesn't happen in China. Yeah, this doesn't really happen. Look, in China. okay, China is not a perfect country by nope. any scope of Chi- the imagination. But I, I like- will say, I will say, I think a lot of us are starting to wake up of like how the um, the American ver- would you say a democracy is, is democracy an American invention? Mm. Democracy is. It, uh, I feel like it's a European convention. Yeah. No, it's it's created in Athens. Yeah, Athens. Athens. Yeah. Athens. Greek. Uh, gr- the Greek. Democratic yeah. Greeks. Yeah. The Greeks created democracy. Mm, but do you think that the democracy that a lot of um, modern civilization are practicing is the Greek version of that? Like, has that stayed? Has that version stayed true throughout? All these, all these years. Without going through a, an academic tangent, I would just like to say that the Western kind of democracy, mm. uh, it has evolved into different kinds of things. Right. You know, uh, there's a uh, there's like a more uh, economically liberal kind of uh, driven democracy, mm. and there's more uh, social driven democracy. Yeah. It, it becomes you know? more nuanced throughout the years. Yeah. Uh, do but I just like to say about uh, about America, like uh, I feel like America is more economically liberal Mm -hmm. than socially uh, liberal or socially democrat Mm -hmm. and (laughs) I would just like to say like if you're uh, the only person that that has the uh, understanding of social welfare seems to be Bernie Sanders and he gets called a socialist and and he gets called a fucking socialist and AOC as well AOC yeah AOC AOC pada how I mean uh, whatever but but I you know, I, I will be honest, like, I haven't been to um, China. Well, I haven't been to China, at least, like, in my memory, because apparently I went when I was, like, like very, very young with my mom, but I, I don't remember. But in, like, more recent years, as, like, me being, like, a more, like, mm. con- uh, like conscious conscious adult, mm. I have, haven't been to China, but a lot of my friends, especially, like, recently, I have a, a good friend of mine, and she recently went to China for a business trip, and so she came back, and she was telling me about how life in china is like like next level I, I, next level in a good way like they are so far ahead they're so advanced and like ah did you she was telling me about this mm. umkm smes okay. umkm yes. itu sme kan yeah right umkm di china mereka Local enterprise. mereka satu ah what did she say satu tahun mereka itu What's omset again in English? Uh, uh, the, profit. Uh, the, yeah, the, the revenue. Profit. Sorry, revenue. revenue. Yeah. Um, how much revenue do they make in a year? Like the average, like OMKM. Mm. Guess. In USD, guess. In USD? Guess. Kalau di Indo kan, kalau nggak salah ya, kalau nggak salah, please correct me if I'm wrong. 200 to 300 million. Eh? Yeah, in kan? USD in, or in the, Indonesian uh, rupiah? Yes, I think. So. USD. Oh, USD. USD. I, I could, I mean, I could be so wrong. Sorry, per, because per like tahun. we were... Buat apa? Buat keluarga atau buat apa? Gak, 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 per tahun. Like the revenue of like... Uh, UMKM? The revenue of... Because, correct me if I'm wrong, SMEs... Eh, SMEs uh, per year... Let me just look it up. Like in, in a country, they can make a certain revenue in Sorry, a year, SMEs right? Sorry, SMEs are state-managed... UMKM? Entre- oh. Iya yeah, kan? Look. 
Okay. Small medium enterprise. Oh, mm. small medium enterprise. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, locals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah kan? Mm. In yeah, Indonesia, yeah. how much do they make in a year? Okay, let me check. Let me check. Oh, M K M. What's revenue in Indo? Uh, sixty-four point two million. US 64.2? No, no, no. Uh, rupees. Sixty-four point two. Sixty-four. Sixty-four point two is six is five thousand dollars. Mm. Oh, that's like is that the average revenue? The revenue of the average revenue of UMKMs in Indonesia is that what it's saying in one uh, year? Itu per tahun ya? Yeah, sixty-four point two million. Putri, I don't remember exactly what you said. It's either that all UMKMs in China combined in one year create. A billion dollars in revenue. Jesus fucking Christ, man. Actually, yeah, I think that's what she said because no way, like one billion dollars is like the average, like for which is which like, part of China did she go to? She went to Shanghai, Fu, Fu, Fuzhou, I think. Fuzhou. Fuzhou starts with an F. Fuzhou, I think. Fuzhou. Yeah, because she was like on a on a business trip over there, so she mm. she was saying like, um, UMKMs over there. I think it's all UMKMs like uh, throughout China in one year. What is like? The average revenue. I think that's what she said. Tapi pokoknya, I remember she said one billion U.S. dollars. That's mm. fucking crazy. One billion. I think Gojek. Gojek is the only one here that we have that had um, that reached a billion dollars in uh, revenue. Yes. Right. Yeah. And that and they're called the fucking unicorn. Yeah. In China, you're a fucking UMKM. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. And in America, it's the same thing. You like if you are a if you are a startup, you're an enterprise that. Generates one billion dollars in revenue mm-hmm. in I think one year. I think that's the the time frame. You're a unicorn in Indonesia. You're a unicorn in China. You're a fucking SME. Yeah, man. That's it just, fucking crazy. It just shows how much tiny and minuscule we are in terms of businesses. My goodness. Compared to China. Yeah. You know. No, and uh, you know, in China, uh, good good luck ha- uh, trying to get away with corruption in China. Because you'll get shot. Oh yeah, you will 100% get shot. And you know, and you know, my my friend, <laughs> my, my my friend Putri, like she she was telling me about how you know over there in China, like yeah, you can't criticize the government. You can't criticize the government. No but it's democracy like, whatsoever. Yeah, no censorship everywhere. No democracy. Um, X J P, like he's going to be in power for I think like the next. He, I mean, he's probably going to be in power for, for as long as we live. Like yeah. I think. I'm gonna die with XJP still being in power in China if he's even still alive. She. The But, thing about she is that uh, he has consolidated so much power yeah. that literally the old farts of the Chinese Communist Party can't really undertake him. You But know? you know what? And the people, most of the people, according to the data, make of that what you will. According to the data, most of the people in China they don't mind. They don't mind XJP in power. Why? Because he has proven himself. To be fair, he has proven himself a very competent leader. Can, do you guys remember when China used to be a dog shit like back wa- like dog water country? Yep. Oh, uh, that's what that was before Deng Xiaoping in like 1975. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. yeah, but that wasn't that long ago when China was a country that was struggling, and I think a good chunk of their population were in poverty. And Mother. now, yeah. now look at the poverty rate in China. Now I'm not even joking. They basically eradicated poverty in China. I'm not even kidding. They eradicated the poverty of the past. The thing about the thing about that is that the thing about China is that what I understand about China is mm-hmm. that they started off as a communist okay. country, yeah. and they realized why should we be poor together when we can be oh, rich shit. together? You know. <laughs> oh shit! What? No, let him know. Uh, ratio of residents living below the poverty line in China from 2000 to two, uh, 2020, right? So 20, 2017 is 3.1 percent. 2018 is 1.7 percent. Sekarang 0.5. Oh uh, yeah, nah, yeah, bro. In 2020, it's zero. <laughs> it's increasing. Yeah. Yeah. See, see, yeah. see, XJP since he has been in power Social has poverty. eradicated poverty in China. Essentially, Essen- essentially, 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 and like, look, 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 I bet there's still poor people. But no, like, yeah. yeah, I'm sure there are still poor people in China that are struggling to get uh, to make ends meet. I am so, so sure of it. But number one, it's so small, and even if, of course, that exists, social welfare in China is mm. strong. Mm. Social. They got social welfare in China. And social yeah. credit. Social welfare. And social credit. And There social was credit. none of that in the United States. I'll tell you. I'll let you know yeah. that right now. Yeah, man. <laughs> When a communist country realizes that they need to be capitalists, they are unstoppable. Mm-hmm. It should be. Oh, it should God. be the other way around. Like if a capitalist country realizes they need to be communist, they could be unstoppable as well. It really shows that there's like a. You need to be in the balance of mm. things. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know. So Bernie Sanders. We right. see in America. We see. 
predatory capitalism mm. going on. It's uh, America. I would I would wager that it is pure hyper capitalism. Hyper capitalism okay. without any trace of socialism, right? Yes. Mm. And with yes. no socialism, it fucks up the people. They're trying mm. to get rich. They're trying to make ends meet, but they can't. Because people in power keeps on fucking them, you know. Mm. They keep on charging them with overpriced medical bills, overpriced medicine, mm. overpriced goods. Everything is everything Everything's seems to be overpriced, there. you know. Oh God, man. it's overhyped. Yeah. Honestly. Meanwhile, in China, everything is good, everything is great, but you don't get democracy. Yeah. But, well, but yeah. what is? But the I mean, is democracy so great? <laughs> Like, I don't know. We have democracy. We have democracy. Uh, here. We have democracy. In, 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 Check out the last episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, a little democracy. But, but we have allegedly democracy here yeah. in Indonesia. <laughs> we allegedly have democracy in America. Hey. And look how the fuck we're doing. Hey, man, at least a lot of people say that Indonesia is the most freest country ever, right? Bullshit. Nobody says that. Bullshit. Nobody yeah. says that. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, no. you're Nobody saying that just that. because no, 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 you're no. wearing the uniform. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not saying it because I wear the uniform, right? Yeah. I'm saying it because it's like this, okay? Let's start from like smaller comparisons. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. First things first. Mm. You curious. smoke in America, you yeah. can get fined. Mm -hmm. You smoke literally everywhere in Singapore, you get definitely fined. Mm. Here in Indonesia, you can smoke everywhere. Who told you that you get fined in America for smoking? Smoking what? Some places. Some states. Yeah. Some states. Yeah. So I'm, um, I'm not yeah. familiar with all 50 states, obviously. In California, it's fine. It's fine in California. Yeah. It just depends where you are in America. Like, I mean, I, I mean, get I that really, America, most of really... Americans are health freaks, but I don't know if they get bad. No, like, that, no, 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 no. That's so fucking, freaks. no, that's so fucking hypocritical because, okay, what, Americans don't smoke cigarettes because, ew, cigarettes, but you're over here literally getting stoned to fucking stupidity by marijuana. <laughs> yeah. Also, you're like high on crack. Yeah, and also diabetes as well. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, diabetes is not a drug, but and like, I, I, but I mean, how hypocritical you're like ew cigarettes and it, you know it's oh, so yeah, gross hate, and it's I but it's i feel like healthy. the younger yeah. the but younger americans are like uh embracing a more healthier uh lifestyle they, yeah, guess are, what? they, they are, are more expensive yeah. vegan food is expensive as fuck ah yeah, I, I, see, see, see. I and this really tells you my social economic bracket i i lived next to whole foods back in the u.s uh -huh. um you want to guess how much like Groserinya satu orang kan aku akan kan aku dewe kan aku sendirian kan aku tinggal di dewe. The contrast. I'm I, I live alone with it. Aku dewe. Aku kan sendiri. Aku kan tinggalnya. Wong Jawa. You jump. You jump from a Californian Valley girl all the way to like a uh, orang bo. Jawa Timur Bo. gitu. Loh. Orang Jawa Timur gitu yang tinggal di Tegal. Bo. Gitu. Bo. Bo. Jawa Timur. Sorry. Bo. 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 Malang. Stasiun balapan yeah. From racing station to stasiun balapan yeah. Oh my lord Shut up, I'm Igusti. telling you <laughs> What? Igusti. Igusti. Uh, Shut up, I'm yeah. telling you okay, 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 Karena okay. aku tinggalnya sendirian kan Jadi aku groserinya itu satu orang uh. Guess how much I would shout out on average $5,000 Enak aja, enggak <laughs> <laughs> What? I, I, I would It's more than an like, income Sekali, yeah. sekali Yeah, that was definitely more than my income What the fuck? Sekali, sekali, sekali pergi Like just one trip to the grocery store on average Like for satu orang makan untuk seminggu Okay, $4,999 Yeah, enggak mungkin lah, no uh, $1,000 God, no, 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 that's not that crazy. Okay, two hundred dollars. Okay. No, I, it, I, I, I was in between like the hundred to two hundred dollar range. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm literally right there. I said two hundred. Oh, okay. You said two hundred. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Then you're, yeah, you're pretty much correct. But, but you do realize that that is an, a, a, an absorbent amount of money. How did you get money in the U.S.? Did you work? I did work. Yes. Oh, what do you work as? I worked seven different jobs, man. <laughs> like. Uh, what? What kind of seven different jobs? I mean, my first job in the U.S. was technically illegal. I was a babysitter. Oh. Yeah. So I was a bit. I was a, uh, yeah, I was. A, I, it's like if the U.S. Embassy was watching this right now, they can charge you with. Nah. Okay. Nah. I see. Uh, because I mean, shit. For all you know, I could be lying. But oh. I was allegedly a babysitter allegedly. for this one um, Hispanic family that lived in my neighborhood, and then so I did that, and mm. then I worked everything from babysitting to customer service to corporate. I worked in a marketing firm up in West Hollywood as well with all the gays. A homeless man followed me on my way to Chipotle. That was really fun. <laughs> what, what, what you gotta mention, like, like the way you what, nonchalantly what, 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 say with all the gays, no, man. Like, it's it's all right. It's West Hollywood. It's, it's West just Hollywood. like why you gotta highlight it. I yeah, work man. I work marketing with the gays. Like, what, dude, like, what, what's the difference, dude, dude? If you say that, if you say that, you know, the gays watching this, they'll be like, oh yes, gal. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. 
Yes. Yes, Indaji. If yes. I said it, if I said it, I can't believe this guy said it. Yes, because he's, he's a bigot. He's a bigot. Yes. He's a bigot. Yeah, man. He's homophobic. It's He's homophobic. It's but I'm when an you ally. say it, I'm when an you ally. Say it, you're an ally. You get free pass. I get yeah. free. I get free pass. No, of course. I'm in West Hollywood. Like, what do you think is gonna be mostly straight people now? <laughs> yeah, it's just like I don't know. The thought of like working, <laughs> working <laughs> marketing with the gays industry. It's like, what's the, the difference? Gays, yeah, man. If I you work like in marketing up in uh, actually, yeah. Really? To to be but to be fair, if you work in marketing and you're in West Hollywood, I think chances are like half of your coworkers are at, like at least half of your coworkers is gay. Yeah, I feel like gay people. People have the talent. No, because in West Hollywood. No, no, no. Because in in LA places like West Hollywood, like that is basically like LGBT mecca. Mm, I see, uh, I see, I see, I see. Did you go to an LGBT bar? Too? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. But it's, it's a term. It's a term that people. It's a term. It's a term. It's the mecca of. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. mecca of. Yeah, like, West Hollywood. Yeah. Mm. Untuk orang Indonesia yang nonton, bukannya penisan agama ya, but yeah, literally no. like white people. No, not just white people, but American people in general. They use the term it's mecca liberals. of. Yeah. yeah, it's the mecca of liberals. It's the mecca of it's the um, mecca of diabetes. Weeps. It's the mecca of anime, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's anime. <laughs> you could say anything. The mecca of anything. Yeah, you man. know. So yeah, that was, and and that was that was really fun. But it's, but it's like really interesting, like the contrast between life in China and the life in life in America. Like both yeah. both places are good in in different ways. Both places are bad in different ways. Yeah, but yeah. with. Everything in life is about picking your poison, and I believe that yeah. everything yeah. from politics to life, everyday decisions is all about picking your poison. What's the poison that you want to pick? Do you want to give up your ability to criticize the government? Um, what else? What else do Chinese people are are not entitled to? Well, censorship, right? Mm. I mean, China is subjected to a lot of government censorship. Bless mm. you. Um, they're subjected to a lot of government censorship. But then again, uh, yeah, they're not allowed to use well. Uh, the the loophole is that they get VPNs. Obviously, like they're entitled yeah. to VPNs. Yeah, VPN. But not that's not something that I think the average it's Chinese person can afford. Yeah. Perhaps, perhaps I could be wrong. But they also got like the VPN police as well. You also have the uh, VPN police in China. And that is also a thing. So it might not, you might you might not get away with it. But do you give up the ability to criticize the government? Um, social media that everybody else in the world uses except for you. But then again, like you have your alternatives because in tic- uh, TikTok in China is not TikTok, it's Douyin. Douyin. It's Douyin, mm-hmm. and then there's um, Weibo. Wei- yeah, Weibo. Yeah. Um, WhatsApp is uh, Weibo. Bli bli. Ko bli bli. Yeah, the bli bli. Tapi bli bli nggak dipanggil bli bli kali. What was it called? The, what's the name in China? I forgot. It's called Bli-Bli. Bli-Bli. I think they're the same corporation, but it's called something different in China because everything in China has a Chinese name. Bli-Bli. So WhatsApp, oh, oh, WhatsApp, like they don't have WhatsApp, but like they have like App this. What? Uh, no, they they oh, have um, WeChat. So in Mandarin is Weixin. Yeah. Yeah. So they have Weixin and Weibo. They have Douyin. They have a bunch. Like they have their own like substitutes, you know. So it's like, what are they really giving up? And and actually, so wait wait wait. Kan kita lagi ngomongin TikTok nih ya. Yeah. Y'all know that TikTok in China. And TikTok everywhere else in the world are different, different, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In China, you know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, well, no, not just the fact that it's called Douyin and everywhere else is called TikTok, but the content is different. Y'all do know that, right? It's curated. Yeah. It's, uh, curated. it's curated. Well, Bike Dance owns TikTok and um, Douyin, but Douyin in China, bro, these kids, they're consuming math content, they're consuming science content, they're consuming all these content that are actually like going towards their academic and vocational um, mm-hmm. development. Like, uh-huh. it, they're getting fed, good shit, they're getting good shit. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, TikTok in America and in Indonesia, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. It's a bunch of people dancing dancing is not the worst of it dancing is fun dancing, dancing. is cute it's but fun. then it's you start cute. getting stupid ass content like yeah. for example right y'all remember the tide pod challenge y'all oh remember the my blackout god challenge? yeah the tide pod challenge uh, the blackout challenge yeah the blackout uh, challenge what other challenges are there They're like the really like dangerous ones so it ranges from everything that just like either it corrupts your mind it corrodes your intelligence or it is Harmful to your health and yeah. might actually fucking kill you. Yeah, chronically yeah. online people will call this brain rot. Yeah, brain rot. It's yeah. brain. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. TikTok is literally giving us food that is causing you brain rot. Mm. And I feel like in some ways China is doing this deliberately so they can destabilize the minds of the youths. Yes. Yo, know, conspiracy yes. theory, man. No, but no, no, no. Oh. I, no, 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 no. No wonder Americans don't want it more. No, yeah. but I don't. I don't think that that's a. Cons- I really 
I really don't think that that's a conspiracy theory. Yeah, but then I, think I, it's just... I no. Why would you not believe that? Why would you not want to believe that a country that it as powerful as China and as power hungry as China mm -hmm. that is literally racing to be the top of like the world like the world power hierarchy why do you think that if they could they wouldn't make it so that their biggest rival which is the united states dumb down their population make them stupid make them addicted yeah literally a psyops operation it's I, why it's is that hard to believe i don't think that that's a conspiracy but, theory but again, if right, i was it, china i'd do it i mean it's already started since like i don't know america has like vine back in the day right like they already have that form of entertainment itself yeah america had yeah. vine yeah, yeah they, they had vine and they Where already do it be, uh, before on youtube as well so yeah it's not necessarily china's fault when it comes to like uh, dumbing down America because yeah. no. America's already dumbing down. Yeah, but because yes. America's already stupid. America's already stupid. Uh, yeah. It's more so because social media, who gave birth to social media? It's Americans. Yeah. Remember that, right? And, you know, you can talk all about um, the evil behind all these like social media mm. corporations such as Meta, for example. There's entire documentaries uh, talking about them. But as in to say, I'm not saying that China is responsible for like no. the, uh, like the stupidization of American dumbification. Dumbification. <laughs> yeah, dumbification. But I, I, I'm saying is that I would not find it hard to believe that there is a little bit of like con like Chinese consciousness in terms of like purposely feeding Americans a certain type of information that they know would be detrimental to their population. Do you see yeah. what I'm trying to say? Like, I'm, yeah. I would not be surprised. Hey, you're stupid. Here's some more stupid stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's yeah. like the Dark Knight scene. Like, <clears throat> uh, madness. It's like gravity. All you need is a little push. Yeah, man. And China is just pushing dumb yeah. and stupid content yeah. to Americans, it's, man. It's, it's seeing the momentum of like how U.S. is, I don't know, declining no, in I, its own sense. I, and you know something else about China when we're talking about U.S. versus China? Mm. Um, I Correct me if I'm wrong. China, they, they limit how much time kids are allowed to be on screens, right? Mm, video games if i'm not mistaken mm. they have like a Can mechanic check? oh actually there's a uh in one of the social credit catalog it says if you play more than three hours of game you get like uh your social credit, credit goes, goes down, down. Mm. yeah right so there's like a sort yeah. of like um yeah, there's like, a point system <laughs> there is a point that you get rewarded yeah and well, hear me out mm. if we approach it through like the uh, the american like if we approach it through like an American de democracy perspective, we would call that a we would call that an infringement upon oh, our right. our, freedom. our our freedom. Yeah, that's what we would call it. Yeah. Mm. But is it infringing upon our freedom, or is it? Man, I hate I hate this. Um, or is it? Think of it as like a parent that is imposing restrictions on you because they want what's best for you. And so okay. are you saying that, the, you know, uh, a Confucian a Confucian society is a mm -hmm. good society in a way that a country that acts as a parent and instills discipline upon yeah, people through, through, uh, through consequences is actually a good thing? Now, let's talk about social credit, actually. Since my mother is Confucianist and she might be watching this, um, yes, mom. <laughs> I want to ask you guys. Would you guys live under a country that has social credit as a system of uh, social order? Tapi, ta control? I, I think I would have to know why that system is being put in place. Uh, well, for China, obviously, it's because of Confucian norms, right? Mm. There, it's based upon Confucian norms. Mm. Right. The government in China actually does sort of act as a parent like it's telling yeah. these kids don't spend too much time on your screens right yeah. otherwise like hey your social credit it, it's like when the teacher in america gets rid of your star from the board mm -hmm. you know what i mean like it get, gets rid of your star sticker and uh, you know what but isn't that the role of government like i want to ask that isn't that the role of government is to so, take care of the people yeah. supposedly right it's to yeah. take care of the people but at the same time like this is where my values conflict because i'm a libertarian like and so my thing is i want little to zero government intervention on your life on anybody's life my life anybody's life the government should not in the, be in the business of telling us what to do i think the government should be there to uphold certain liberties mm. absolutely but for it to be apparent and tell us what to do and how to live like that there is i ve i grew up very much i grew up very much american right let's just call it like it is i grew up very much american and so it's very hard for me to see the 
other side because of course the way that I have been culturally programmed is that yeah that is a infringement upon my liberty but I'm trying to see I think this is where like different cultural perspectives like can really come in because I don't think Chinese people or I'm not saying all Chinese people but a lot of people in China I don't think that they they don't seem to view it that way they seem to view it as like this is just the government doing their this job. This is the yeah. government. Yeah. This is the government doing their job. And again, back to that Confucianist mm -hmm. ideal of this sort, like a, a sort a, of a this, power system yeah. mm -hmm. that is responsible for you and uh, your yeah. benefit. It's the, it, yeah. it's, it's the government. It's a it's a filial it's a filial government trying to mm -hmm. do their job. And, also, and Chinese people like understand that. And uh, and and sorry, you you know what else? Um, in China. You know why they adopted communism in the very, very beginning when like China was a fucking like bump fuck country and they were struggling and everything. And then why they do you decided, think they adopted communism? Well, this is what I you fact. I think you might know this better than I do. So you fact check me because like this is what I was told. Okay. That China, they adopted communism. Gimana sih jelasinnya? In part because like they were struggling, right? Mm. And so they were struggling. And then I, whoever decided it first, I I don't know the history to that detail, but they were like okay, we need to build a system so that it is in everybody's best interest that we all look out for one another because China was in in such a destitute like economic state and everybody was everybody was suffering. Mm, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. how Chinese Indonesians like me came here, right? Yeah, because yeah, like yeah. our ancestors, like they, they left because China was fucking miserable. And so they were like, we need to huddle together. We need to come together. We need to build this country. We need to build this country. We need to build our society. We need to raise our children. And we all need to be incentivized to do that for one another because what we do for one another is going to ultimately benefit ourselves. Yeah, yeah that's true. Because um, comparing to what you say mm. uh, regarding why China undertook communism mm. as, a form of, uh, as a form of governance, um, I'm gonna do like a small lecture of Chinese history to you guys, right? Teach so, me about my people. Yeah. So China, <laughs> uh, so China has been living under the uh, under the concept of the mandate of heaven for so long, mm. for literally three thousand years, even more. Mm. What is the mandate of heaven? Well, the mandate of heaven is a belief that a certain government is legitimized to govern its people based on the blessings of the heavens mm -hmm. of the gods. If the gods give uh, China so much money, so much you know blessings, then therefore that government is is good. Mm -hmm. But if there is bencana, there is disaster, mm -hmm. there is a famine, mm -hmm. there is corruption. Mm -hmm. That means that government has lost its mandate of heaven, mm. and thus it needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. But you see, the thing is, <clears throat> China has been going through a thing called dynastic cycle, right? So one dynasty lo loses its mandate of heaven. China falls into a civil war that kills like three million people mm -hmm. each like a hundred years. Mm -hmm. Like Chinese people keep on doing that. It's it's a meme. It's literally yeah, a meme. Like three million the Chinese people. Savages for a while. That's yeah. what happened to yeah. my ancestors. Yeah. So like yeah, uh, every hundred years something you know shit happens. Three million people dies. You know, twelve million people eat each other. You know, mm -hmm. stuff. It's wild in China, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And well. Uh, uh, it, it went. It, this cycle went through all the way to like the 19th century, mm -hmm. when Europeans came into China and they're like, "Hey, here's something new called nationalism and democracy and communism," and they're like, "Wow, this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Why don't we use this instead of you know instead of you know having uh, having emperors and empresses and 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 aristocrats and eunuchs rule our country?" Mm. And so. Different people like communists, nationalists, and different war, 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 warlords, mm -hmm. they fight against each other so they would achieve a conquest of China, a mandate of heaven. Because the only way you could unite China and get the mandate of heaven is through force. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's through force. If you manage to conquer everything and everybody, you know, you know they submit to you, mm -hmm. that means you have received the mandate of heaven because... Mm -hmm. <laughs> you you literally you literally rule everything, mm -hmm. and at the time the Communist Party had its mandate of heaven, and all the way up until now the Communist Party continues to have its mandate of heaven. Mm. Xi Jinping, uh -huh. he uh, el basically eliminated poverty 
it enables him and his government and his regime mm -hmm. to continue ruling in China yeah. until shit that, happens. That yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody will give a fuck about democracy, you know, unless, unless back, you know, back in COVID, people were literally locked in prison inside yeah, their own and homes. And then, they, and then, and then well. <clears throat> yeah, see, yeah. okay, that's where, yeah, that's, that's where, uh, that's when, uh, that's where, you know, we, I, I think some of us, we joke around about like, do we really need democracy? But I mean, look at the alternative, like what happened to China back in COVID, they were literally locked in their own They homes. were locked and they were starved and the government literally, you know, there was, I don't know if this is true or not, but in China, like people were showing, you know, they, they made like a page where they were showing food. Like, oh yeah, we have, we have good food at home. We have perfectly good food at home. But you know what I think? I think it's just bullshit propaganda. I think it's just government <laughs> propaganda to show everybody that everything is all right. Uh, at the same time, uh, there is a level can, of, she can you, sh you should exercise a healthy level of skepticism when it comes to um, news that comes out of the Chinese government's mouth. Yeah. Uh, they're very much known for propaganda. And I, you know, I, I, I wonder, is that what comes in the package of not being a democracy, right? The government basically controlling, um, bas the government basically controlling what news you get and like um, whether or not you are fed the truth of what is happening out there in the world. But at the same time, I don't think that that's any different than what's going on in America and even in Indonesia right now. Like, yeah. I mean, we're democracies, we're like we're full on democracies and yet there is a lot of government censorship. There is a lot of government propaganda and a lot of these news companies I'm not gonna name which ones, but here in Indonesia, like you know, we have a lot of big news corporations, mm -hmm. yeah, and which, what you know, you do some digging and you come to find out that they are either affiliated with all of these like political, political parties. parties. They're funded by political yeah. parties. They're funded by politicians. Let's just fucking name all those news outlet. Come on. Uh, Would you want it? Al Jazeera. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> Indonesian Indonesian news outlet, right? Mm -hmm. You got Metro TV, Surya Palo. Yeah. They're literally National Democrats. Yeah. yeah, we had TV One, Abu Rizal Bakri, mm. literally Golkar, and then what else? Have you have you said Metro yet? Metro. Yeah, I said Metro. Metro was the first. Met Metro, Kompas, Kompas is um. Kompas is Haritanu. Mm. Oh yeah, M Haritanu M MNC. Right. M MNC and um, siapa lagi? Kompas, Kompas siapa ya? Mata, eh, si na kalau si Najwa, Mata Najwa. Mata Najwa, she's, I mean, she's not political. Well. Is she, uh, she might narasi, be the only narasi. like she might be the only like bipartisan. Oh. Yeah, narasi narasi. Yeah, narasi. Yeah. Um, uh, that's what, TV One. Wait, narasi. Yeah, we we already talked about TV One. Narasi oh, okay. narasi is oh yeah 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 yeah. Uh, mata uh, Najwa Shihab, Andovi is there as well, right? And uh, the, the the Lopez brothers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and internationally, you know, Al Jazeera is owned by Iraq, right? No, Al Jazeera eh? is owned by Qatar. Qatar. Oh, Qatar, bukan Iraq. Qatar or Morocco, Qatar. either of those two. I think it's I think it's Qatar. They're owned by a they're owned by a really powerful Middle Eastern country. So I think that's Qatar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, they're owned by a very powerful Middle Eastern country. Um, that. Uh, and then you get Fox News. <laughs> and then you get Fox News. Fox News. C Republican. CNN. CNN. Kalau uh, CNN siapa ya? They're they're pre liberal Democrat. Yeah, Leno, a liberal Democrat, but like who are the sort of like? Yes. I have no idea, but I know the Fox News stakeholders are Republicans. Mm. You know, obviously. It not really like uh, the previous owner of the uh, Fox News or Fox uh, companies. Mm -hmm. He's, his name is Rupert Murdoch, right? He's actually an Australian. Yeah. But he has uh, completely controlled the right wing market of. America and the UK. Right. Right. Each time the conservatives in uh, the UK and the Republicans want to have an election campaign, they go to Fox News. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, there's actually, if you guys go to this, there's this company called Ground News, and I actually really, really like them. Um, and they have this really cool system of like when you click on one of their um, news articles, I'll, you know, what, I'll just I'll put it up here. Ed editor's note, uh, I'll put an image up here. Yeah. So like if you go on to any of their like photos, like you can see how um, there's how many times it's been, um, oh no, how many sources it has, how many sources it has and like whether or not it leans more left, right or center. 
yeah, yeah. In, in percentage. I think it's really cool. So they're very like committed. Oh yeah, to you should you should really you know put the link on the description. I will. I will. Um, and That's then interesting. Like I like to check it out as well. Yeah. No, I'll I'll, I'll send it to you guys. And then yeah. um, they have this. I think they had a competition. Um, it was decided by Ground News and the Political Compass. You know yeah, the Political yeah, yeah. Compasses um, for the most trusted news source. I think like these are all the international players. So you have like CNN, Daily Wire, Fox News, Daily Wire. Daily um, Wire is right. They got Brett Cooper. Yeah, remember? they do. Mm. Uh, they, there's AP, Washington Post, um, a, a lot, a lot, The Hill, and you know it's this um, final, like this type of competition, and it came down to Reuters versus AP, Associated Press, and the winners Reuters, and actually like I very Reuters much, are great. Reuters is very very good. Reuters is good. Um, I heavily recommend that when it comes to. Um, Jur journalist, uh, journalistic research. Reuters. Yeah, just go, go to. Well, don't just go to Reuters. Like I think it's fine to consult with like what is CNN and saying, what is BBC well. saying. Compare and contrast, but I, I'm more inclined to believe Reuters. Mm. Um, and I think a lot, yeah, a lot of people would agree as well. Mm. Yeah, there yeah, seems yeah. to be, they seem to be the most bipartisan international news outlet, news company that we have. Yeah, thus far. I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah, and then if you put it into a competition, that also proves that meritocracy works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why? Why? I don't know. Like, uh, we, uh, you guys mentioned about like, uh, yeah. If, uh, w what if we live in a in a society with like social credits and such like that? And usually, when it comes to, like, uh, there, there's like point system and etc. It, it leans to the directions of like, uh, competition in its own way, right? And then hmm. you mentioned about like how these news outlets are like they, like these news, uh, yeah, teams they they are put into competitions into brackets on like who's better and who's more trustworthy. It go, uh, that, that's why I said that meritocracy is based on like how uh, how much you achieve in a yeah, in in goodness like uh, whether uh, like how much you achieve I I in general right mm. so that's why I kind of like I kind of say like yo meritocracy kind of works and then it, when, when you when you like culminate like this whole uh, and then if we go back to the social credit part if you culminate like these good social credit points and shit like that and then just follow what the government T uh, basically tells you to do to get these points it's i don't know like it, it drives the society to be to become like better in its own way but then that's, that's not meritocracy is it i would say uh, is it meritocracy do you think it is well what was like the uh general sense of it that like in china you know they do the social uh -huh. credit thingy so it's like if you just do whatever the government says and you accrue all it of these social credits like you accrue points from the government you get like a star Mm -hmm. And so it's like the more stars you have, then it's like you um, essentially. Mm. About the more stars you have from the government, the, the, more benefits you get. the more benefits you get. And in essence, he's saying that that is meritocracy. So I don't know why, but it sounds really similar to Starship Troopers. Okay. What's yeah, because like uh, Starship in Starship Troopers, the society that the characters live in, in practice, it's Chinese, but in in theory and ideals, it is very much American. So, in order to have, uh, you know, to become a democratic uh, person, as in you have, you have free speech, you have political rights, you have the right to vote, you have the right to buy a house, you need to serve the government first. Mm. Yeah. So, you serve the government first in any sort of capacity, be it military, judicial, anything. And then if, you, if, you've, done your, if you've done your duty for the government, you get a citizenship. That means you get political rights. You 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 are free to express your opinions. It's like a level up. Right? Yeah, it's like a level up, basically. Mm. But yeah, that really sounds like Starship Troopers. I don't it know what like it is. Sounds like Animal Crossing as well. Yeah. How yeah. is it? Like, yeah, I guess so. It's a so. game. Basically, yeah, it's, it's a game. just a game. It's a game. Yeah, it's a game. Life's a game. But like, yeah, man. Uh, I don't know what it, what the term is <laughs> in like political concepts and shit. I I forgot, you know. Uh, but it does sound like Starship Troopers. But I'd like to ask you this question since mm. I feel like we're reaching the end of our show. Mm -hmm. Okay, both of you guys, okay? All right. U.S. and China, which one is better for Indonesia? Hmm. Better. Better in what sense? Yeah, define better. Should for Indonesia economics? be like China or should Indonesia be like America? Socially or economically? Socially and economically. Socially and economically. In general. In general, In general. Should we be more like the Americans or should we be more like the Chinese? Essentially, yes. which is what you're asking. Well, I know damn well them Americans are not doing well. <laughs> um, that being said, the Chinese ain't perfect either. Um, 
I. This is gonna. This is sound, gonna sound like a cop out. Mm. Shouldn't we strive to be like in the middle of those two? I mean, you could also grab in best things about the both things, mm. right? What is the best thing about America? Capitalism. Capitalism. No, that's not. Well, but we have capitalism here. Yeah, but like. Well, the they, difference they're, is they're they got. But they're hyper. Pushes the idea. Yeah, no, but I am not. I am not a proponent of hyper capitalism. I will tell you that I love capitalism. Believe me, like I come from a. I I come from a business family. Like I I love capitalism. That being said, I don't. I am not a proponent of hyper capitalism. So I have seen the dark side of that. Yeah. So do you think uh, Indonesia should be a bit more like China? Capitalistic? Oh, China. Yeah. But China is capitalistic. What the fuck you mean? Like everybody there, all they do is work, make money. Capitalist in in a Chinese sense. Capitalist know, in a Chinese sense. That you also have like social welfare, etc. Mm. etc. Cetera, et cetera. I def I am definitely an advocate for social welfare. I think that that is one thing. But actually, hold on. I should ask you this because I think you'd know better than anybody else. In Indonesia, like how does our social welfare compare to both China and Indo? Uh, I think Chinese social welfare is better. It's uh, we're only starting out since. Uh, during the SBA eras, uh, during the SBA era, we had blueprints for social welfare, but it was only rolled out during the Jokowi era. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, but our in terms of social welfare, but in terms um, of quality, Indonesia greater than America, but China greater than Indonesia. Social yes. Work. Okay. Got yeah, it. Much that. In that level, yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm definitely an advocate of social welfare. Capitalism, absolutely a must, but not not so hyper capitalistic either. Hmm. Um, I think. Oh God, this is one that kills me, government intervention. Because at the same time, like when you have such a free society and everybody's let to, everybody is allowed to do whatever the fuck they want, they don't always do the best thing for themselves, yes. right? Like, let's just call it like it is. Like we don't always do the best thing for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We think we know what we want, but, you know. but it's, you know. and yeah, you might want it, but is it what's best for you? No. No. Um, and that's what really kills me. This is where my values really conflict because I'm very like old school classic, American libertarian here, mm. but <sighs> being raised inside a Buddhist Confucian family. Yeah, but I also come from like a Buddhist Confucianist family, so I also see. I've never been raised to view the government as sort of like this parental figure. Of, yes. Uh, but that being said, then what is the purpose of government? Yes, to uphold key liberties, like I said, upholding key liberties. But can the government, if it is going to ultimately result in what is best for us, then should we not be okay with it? Mm -hmm. If the government imposes teeny tiny restrictions on our liberties to ensure that in the long run, we are going to not end up as in overindulgent degenerates, you know. Like California. Like California. <laughs> Oh, like a lot of Americans, to be honest. Um, uh, it's where where is the where is the balance? And I don't think what's a country out there that is closest to achieving that balance? Maybe uh, not Singapore. We could achieve that balance, you know. Well, who's the closest that we have currently? Like a working model today. Mm. One of the Scandinavians? Oh, yeah. Really hard. Scandina again, like Scandinavians is only like that because their population is manageable. Mm -hmm. That yeah. too. When, when you talk a lot about implementation of um, legislation and protocols, so much of it is also dependent on how big is your population mm. and like, yes. like when you're talking about how feasible that even is. Because you, you need to remember that economy doesn't work on scope, it works on scale. Scale, yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. That's, that's why. So it's like with Indonesia, but China, woohoo! Like, what the fuck? Like, wh I mean, China, China's population is big, so its economy is also big. But if they lose people, their economy will also be, be fucked. fucked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And so there's like this sort of incentive model yeah. for everybody to look out for one another. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sebenarnya Indonesia juga ada kan apa konsepnya gotong royong ya? Gotong royong. Right. In a way, you know, yeah. but we are a gotong royong community. Tapi kita, tapi the thing about Indonesia, yeah, but we don't, we, we don't necessarily that, have that that sense yeah. of like uh, physical incentive, you know? Yeah, because that's what we're trying to look for. I, I think kayak, kayak the difference between uh, gotong royong China and gotong royong Indonesia. Gotong yeah. royong China itu tuh lebih filial. Mm. I think the difference is gotong royong China is um, enforced enforced through economics. In, as yeah, in, as in, as in, Chinese, uh, Chinese, the whole Chinese economy depends on people abiding by gotong royong. Yeah, ethics. Whereas ethics Indonesia, we don't. 
Yeah, we but don't. But it, in yeah. Indonesia, it's just philosophical. It's like, yeah. you know, Indonesians... Lebih kayak aspirasi sih, yeah, okay. it's more like an aspiration. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what we should do. Yeah, 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 that is true. That Dan kalau misalkan like in China, gotong royong itu, I feel like it's more filial in a way that you are part of a family, one big family that you. Yeah, really but, why are, but why are? But why is yeah. that filial sense there? Yeah, is because if yeah, the the economic incentive because if they don't have that, they're fucked. Yeah, because like <laughs> if uh, if a family is if a family is rich, then all the other people around them are also pretty rich as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Helping different here in Indonesia. In that lo itu gotong royong because of more a communal thing, mm -hmm. right? But you when you live inside a community, there's also like different kinds of people inside it. So there's like less apa ya kayak lebih dikit aja gitu lo kemauan untuk membangun. Less commune as we but like to think. You know? I think like I think from your answer regarding should we be like U.S. or China. The the way I see is that we kind of have to lean a bit like China, but less on the government intervention. Is I, that correct? I think. Because the thing about <laughs> China is there's so much government intervention, like protectionism, etc., etc. Oh, I, God, I, I'm so hyper idealistic. It shoots shoots me in the. It foot. really does contradict you, does it? It. The fact that you know whatever China is doing is good, but also their government intervention. The results are good. Is, oh, the results are objectively good. I can't values. deny that. Yeah. I I can't deny that. At the same time, again, you allow the government. You give them an inch, they'll take an entire yard, and they'll take many, 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 many yards off of you. And when the time comes, so for example, what happened in China, COVID, right? You get locked in your own house. You're starving in there. Hmm. That's why I'm reluctant to give governments that much power over you. Mm. So, but that, I think there needs to be a middle. I'm also, I'm not saying like, what's the what's the opposite of that? Like an anarchy? Like where we just don't listen to the government, there's no government and we just do whatever we want. I'm, yes, not, I'm not saying that either. I just think that there needs to be a middle. And in my ideal world is that I think we adopt a lot of the behaviors and the mindsets of the Chinese, mm. but uh, legally and economically we operate more like the Americans. Mm, I see, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. How about you? Me? U.S. or America? Which one is better for Indonesia? I think Indonesia should be just like Indonesia. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I believe nationalism. Okay, in Pak Soekarno, Pak Soeharto, Pak Bintiabi, I believe <laughs> that Indonesian nationalism is key. Is key. We learn from the Chinese for their fucking. What you call it? Uh, yeah, the meritocracy thing. Uh, with, 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 uh, yeah, meritocracy thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, and social credit bullshit. You know, right? Because yeah. like, I do believe in like, oh yeah, if you want, if you want your people to do something, give them credit, like literal credit, social credit. So you'd be in favor of passing a legislation that essentially incentivizes people on a more sort of like tangible yeah. level. Yeah, to yeah. exactly. Because that's what, because that's what mo most people need. Cause like if you're gonna reward uh, someone with like, oh yeah, here's here's a plaque saying that you did a good job in gold in gold writings, right? Like if you're just gonna get a plaque, I don't give a shit. Unless like I said, like like there's a lot of like Indonesians who get like good awards and shit like that, and then because there is no physical incentive, they had to force uh, they, they they force themselves to sell those like. Uh, plaques of gold bullshit. Like for example, Kuri Amega, the goal, uh, Indonesia's goalkeeper. Oh like, he got paid. <laughs> like no, nah, he was number one. He he did his job for his country. And guess what? He wasn't he wasn't physically incentivized. And now he sells fucking crisps on TikTok. And uh, he sells his fucking medallion. It's sad. Yeah. It's it's so sad. So oh sorry, I'm like spraying everywhere. <laughs> but like, <laughs> but, like uh, the thing is right. If if I would if I were to say that Indonesia should lean to one side or the other, right? I would like to say that yeah, I mean I would I would agree with Indah side on this one. Uh, to lean to lean a bit on China uh, when it comes to like uh, uh, mindset. Yeah, the, uh, on the mindset and then also the social culture. Yeah, so uh, I would say yeah that ah, fuck I forgot what the the physical in uh, incentives Incentive. and shit because like it. It entices people to do work. You know, like, oh my god, I get this if I get this? Mm. Oh, fuck yeah, you know, I'm, I want to do this. But, yeah, when it comes to, like, laws and protection and then, like, uh, just freedom in its own self. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be, like, be more like the Americans. Have fun. I, I, be crazy. You know what? I will say I agree with you. Humans are creatures of motivation we need yeah. to be motivated in order to do things and we need to be I, I agree with you we need to be incentivized to to do good and to in, in order to incentivize that we yeah. need to be rewarded for behaving good mm. the tricky part is who the fuck is 
um, deciding whether a behavior is good or bad, right? But I think that we can all agree. <laughs> but I think that we can all agree that there are objectively good behaviors. So, for example, studying. Mm. You can't. You can't make an argument that studying is bad. You just can't, right? Studying, <laughs> participation, participation in the classroom. See, this is what I mean when I say like. I think there are certain like Chinese and Eastern Asian mindsets that Indonesia would really benefit if we just adopted because why the fuck in Indonesia like if you are a student in class and you are actively participating you are asking questions you are engaged in presentations and classroom discussions that you are bullied by your classmates because it's like oh dia <laughs> no, itu I went through that I went through that apa sih namanya dalam bahasa Indo kamu tuh caper kamu dipanggil caper teacher's pet teacher's pet kayak gitu because the thing about you Indonesians is that you Indonesians swallow on being fucking poor. You Indonesians yes. like to drag people down when Crab they're mentality. better than oh you yeah. are. You guys are fucked. You guys are the reason why Indonesia is like this. Yeah. Because when there's a least bit amount of people who are better than you, you guys drag them down. Right. You're Because you guys okay, do not have any sense of competition. Yeah, and I would say you see you see it and in the fucks that romanticize being poor and playing your ukuleles in cafes. You sons of bitches. I'm talking about you guys who shit talk me, who bullied me because I was better than you guys. Hey. Because I participated in the classrooms, because I got better scores than you guys. You tried fucking me up but look where i am now exactly uh, in a couch <laughs> in a couch um, with one of the biggest names in indonesia wow there you go no, how about I... you guys where did you guys go you guys <laughs> where did you guys go where did you let guys out, go mama. let it out mama where did you guys go no, I'll, I'll be the yeah sure yeah. and what's next Pas banget we're on a couch. But actually, no, hold on, before I forget. Mm. And you know what's very interesting? Here in Indonesia, we see somebody better than us, faster mm -hmm. than us, stronger than us, right? Achieving more than us. And the, the this this is more to do with the fact that we're humans. Like As humans, I think we are just this way. That we we look at that and we shit on it because we're jealous. Um, crab mentality, right? Yeah. And in China, the in countries like China, the system is set up so that You see somebody better than you, stronger than you, achieving more than you, faster than you. They get rewarded, and you want that reward. Exactly. Yeah, I agree with him actually on that yeah. one. Yeah, you, man. You gotta be more like Kanye. Harder, better, faster, stronger. That's Kanye. That's Kanye. Yeah, that's Kanye. Uh, yeah, Kanye and Daft Punk. 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 Daft <laughs> ah, anyways looks like we are at the end of the episode and thanks for joining our discussion of us versus china which Woo. one is better for indonesia <laughs> and i'll see you in the next episode of the asu podcast asu